Hey there, friends and fans. I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Mike Reno of Loverboy. I am giddy and excited to talk to you, dude. Uh, thanks. This is great, Katie. I appreciate that. Now, Mike, your music is always so upbeat and brings a smile to people's faces. I mean, you guys have been around for over 40 years, and I'm still singing along with you. Um, that must feel real good, right? 40 years? Are you kidding me? It can't be that long, can it? It can't be because you only just had your 45th birthday, so this doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, we've been around quite a while. And, uh, you know, we were just playing last week in, uh, where were we, Texas. Crowds went crazy. We're back. The people are so excited to see us back again. I mean, that whole thing with uh, COVID was just ridiculous. I mean, wow. Can you imagine? It's like the twilight zone. We're back. I can't believe it. Well, I mean, you brought up the C word COVID and COVID then brought us the Z word Zoom, which we are utilizing right now. But uh, you're about to go out on tour with Styx and Ario Speedwagon, like total excitement right now. But the tour is called Live and Unzoomed. Who gets credit for naming this tour? You know, I don't know who named it, but I guarantee you, I sort of signed on as soon as they asked me. Uh, some of the guys in the bands, uh, called up and said, do you want to do this tour? And I said, are you kidding me? I really appreciate it. Like, um, can you imagine the hits on stage that uh, every night? It's just a new. This concert's going to rock. It really is. I'm a fan of all three of the bands. Um, I mean, listen, I, Tommy Shaw is beloved over at Access TV. Kevin Cronin is beloved over at Access TV. You are beloved over at Access TV. I feel like we should be a title sponsor on this thing. I <laughs> uh, look forward. Well, you know what? We can't wait. It's counting down, too. It's coming up real quick. And uh, apparently the tickets are selling like crazy. So, I mean, it was going to just be a ride. And a lot of them are outdoor shows um, in the big uh, outdoor uh, concert halls, you know, like the, the I sheds. like that. I like a good outdoor amphitheater, you know? I mean, listen, it's good for the people who are smoking in the back, too. They enjoy it. But, like, <laughs> just to be under the stars and just have that open air feel, even before COVID, I liked that vibe. Were you always, you know, partial to that as well? You know what? There's nothing like a summer concert outdoors. You're right. It's just It just says it, uh, summer. Summertime. Everybody's having a, having a great time. And, you're, and especially right now, outside's good. You know, it's good to be outside. As you're not enclosed, it's not air conditioned. It's just outside. It's going to be hot and sweaty and it's going to be a riot. As all of your concerts are hot and sweaty. So yes, I do. I do say open air is probably best because some people like to do this and you want to be like, no. <laughs> all right. For those of you just joining us, we are at home and social with Mike Reno of Loverboy. Loverboy will be out on tour this summer with Ario Speedwagon and Styx. Tickets are on sale now. The tour kicks off on May 31st. It goes all the way into September. Is there a city or a town that you are really looking forward to? Just because we didn't get to go to so many places over the last two years. So are you dying for a hot dog here or a hoagie sandwich there or a slice of pizza where? Well, we're playing Blossom. I haven't played in Blossom for a while. And I think that's just outside of Cleveland, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I want to go to the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. So I'm looking forward to the Cleveland show, which is almost right off the bat. And then there's going to be concerts all down uh, the East Coast, the West Coast, Florida. I have a lot of friends in Florida. I have a lot of friends in California. Um, I'm telling you, this is really going to be the summer uh, of all summers. Well, you mentioned the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, and Loverboy is in the Canadian version of the Rock Hall of Fame, right? It's the uh, Canadian Music Hall of Fame. You were inducted in 2009. What was that experience like? Well, it's kind of nerve-wracking, you know, to tell you the truth, Katie. They, uh, you know, it was in a, a room that held 16,000 people, for one thing. It was beautifully set-directed. It was uh, on television, and it was like, right off the bat, that's kind of nerve-wracking. But I got calmed down when a lot of the people in the industry that we, we've worked with over the last 30, 40 years all came on and said super nice things about us on, on the big screen. And then they, they handed us the award and the award was handed to us by our uh, engineer producer, uh, Bob Rock, who's a really good friend and a great musician. And uh, it was here in Vancouver where we live and uh, it was unbelievable. I was, uh, I was really nervous, but it was just, uh, it was like one of the highlights of my career, for sure. Well, and rightfully deserved, um, Loverboy is, uh, has had four multi-platinum albums, which is so special, especially in this day and age where people are only buying and downloading singles and not doing these, these albums. Um, you really did 
get to live during a magical time when it came to platinum and rock and roll success, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, we could uh, we sell some records and they get an award that says right on there, 500,000. The next step up is uh, a million. And the next step up is two million. And we, had, we were lucky enough to have a bunch of those experiences. And every every one of those experiences was fantastic. I mean, some of the stuff that we uh, in the awards that we have, they're all over the house here. I, it's insane. And it just kind of shows you, you know, you sit back and you go, wow. When people were buying records, they were sure buying a lot of my records. And I, I feel honored. I really do feel. People have always been drawn to Loverboy. Um, you're known for your bandanas and leather pants. <laughs> Will we be seeing bandanas and leather pants out on tour this summer? Oh, man, are you getting them now? Let me see what I have right here. What is this uh -huh. bandana thing right here? I could put that on my forehead like that. You know, I don't know what it all started. You know what it all started is the lights were so close and it was so sweaty. Uh, we started off playing nightclubs and the lights are like about, you know, 14 feet away from you on stage and you're playing away and you're sweating. I had, and I started off with the headbands by cutting off the sleeves of my uh, T-shirt one at a time. So the first set I had two, two, two sleeves on, second set I had one sleeve because I put this, I'd cut the sleeve off my T-shirt and I'd put it on my forehead. And then I would cut the next one off because the other one was wet and throw it away. Next thing you know, I'm in a tank top and I've got a headband on and it became a big deal. And it was just out of necessity of being hot and sweaty. <laughs> well, we can all identify with that when you're in a rock and roll world. But the um, leather pants, Katie, they, that was a huge mistake. You don't want to wear leather pants. Yeah, face. I was going to say leather pants. First off, you're not very agile in leather pants. And then that only adds to the sweatiness. So it's kind of like you were trying to resolve the situation while making it worse at the same time. But they look so good at first. You know, until the next week, and then they started looking a little ratty because you know, you know, you, you're doing a hot rock concert, and you got red leather pants on, and they're pretty soon they're not that red anymore. You know, just because they're sweaty. And, you know, the the worst thing you can wear on stage, absolutely. But they sure look good in videos. They do look good in videos. All right, let's talk about some of your music because I'm obsessed. For those of you just tuning in, he is Mike Reno from Loverboy. Loverboy will be out on tour this entire summer with Ario Speedwagon. Oh, yeah, and Styx. It's going to be a great time. And people, uh, people are there to see all of your music, but you know it. You know they want to sing along to everybody's working for the weekend. And that's got to just... I mean, it's such a good time because people truly, it's become a catchphrase. It's a lexicon. It's an iconic word that we use. You know, people constantly will be like, ah, everybody's working for the weekend. And then you have a song about it. You know, Is it satisfying to play that at the end of the night? Are you kidding me? It's like, it's, I, I kind of look forward to it myself. When I hear that cowbell, I go out of my, I go out of my mind. Um, and another thing is, do you think, yeah, do you think we should play that this this summer? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. People would riot if you didn't play it, right? And, and wear the head back. Yes, this is it. <laughs> I, we're getting. A, I feel like you're about to start singing to me. You're gonna. You're gonna <laughs> serenade me. I know it. Everybody's I'm, what? I'm getting ready. I'm. I'm so. I'm just totally amped about this tour. Um, and absolutely, working for the weekend is a highlight of the of one of the highlights of the night. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a lot of kind of. Um, uh, notable song we turned me loose was a big, big you know uh right out of the bat you know we we had lots of great songs lots of great videos i think a lot of it was because mtv was around the first week they were open Loverboy handed them three videos you know so right off the bat we had a good arrangement with mtv because you know they needed a whole bunch of music and we offered it to them well, I mean, and then there's also just stuff that you've done uh, aside from Loverboy. Um, I have to admit, Mike, and this is probably really embarrassing as a rock and roll journalist, but for some reason, I did not know that that was you duetting with Ann Wilson on Almost Paradise uh, using the Footloose movie in 1984. I, I don't know why. Maybe it was because I was just so obsessed with Kevin Bacon that I like had <laughs> blinders on and nothing else mattered. But that song is just so dang good. Tell me what it was like to be in the recording studio with Ann Wilson. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, it was a one day deal. We kind of just did it one take. It was one of those magic moments where I got up, she got up, we looked in the same microphone, faced each other and sang the song once. And the producer Keith also went, that's perfect, thank you guys. You know, and that doesn't happen very often that you get it in one take, you know. There's usually a lot more involved when you record a song than one take. But uh, she's a true, true professional. And she was, uh, 
my first pick, by the way. She's a fabulous singer. She's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. And she's um, rock and roll royalty, that's for sure. Absolutely. And you know, the, a lot of the guys don't know this, but a lot of people don't know this, but they lived in Vancouver for about 12 years. And so we got to know them very well. They used to play in all the nightclubs and stuff before they got the record deal. And so they were like a, 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 a state. That's where we all went. We went yeah. there weekend to see them wherever they were playing. We drag ourselves over there and we just rock. And they, they used to play a lot of great. Uh, and then they started writing songs and it was fabulous. All right. So the the Lover Boy will be heading out on tour May 10th with Ario Speedwagon and Styx. But there's there's a there might be a conflict of interest. OK, Which you're is- going to be out on tour. And yeah. then the new Top Gun movie is going to be coming out and, and you may not get to go to the opening premiere. And I know this this movie has got to be near and dear to your heart because you had a song featured on the first song, soundtrack. Right. Yeah, we did. You know, we, what are you going to do? You got to go see Maverick, man. You got to oh, cancel oh, the show that night. Yeah, you're right. No, I got to see Maverick. I mean, we might have to. Yeah. I'm going to phone Live Nations right after this and I'm going to cancel that show so we can all go see the movie together. I could just see us walking in three bands with all the roadies walking into this. No, this will be fun. Oh, I'll, we'll definitely see it. You'll catch it on a night off. Um, Mike, you, you clearly have a great sense of humor and that goes a long way in this industry. But so do the other guys that are going to be out on tour with you. I love the video that was put out to announce this tour where you see uh, Kevin Cronin, Cronin talking to um, uh, Tommy Shaw and then you're zooming in. Um, what did you think when you saw the, the, well, let's roll it first. I'm so tired of these video calls, aren't you? You know, Tommy, I'm thinking this is a sign. I think it's time get together and get back on the road. A tour? Hell yes. Who can we take with us? Hmm, I'm thinking lover boy. Do, were you expecting the video to turn out as cute as that? Or were you kind of like, I don't know what they're making me do here. Oh, it actually came out way better than I thought it was. But we did have fun that day. They came up to my place. Uh, it was a whole crew up in my music room and we were just uh, having, we actually had so much fun. I figured whatever they show will probably be fun because when they all, when we finished it all, everybody said that was like one of the funnest times we've had in a long time, which is great because if you show you're having fun and then it, it looks like you're having fun. But what's also great is the way the other guys did their spots and they rolled into my spot and then I rolled into their spot. I, I thought it was very well done. And, and, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing the guys in a couple of weeks. So, y- y- being in this music business for 40 plus years, if you were given a time machine, all right, let's play what if, if you were given a time machine and you could write a new song and release it in any year or decade, going backwards, not forwards, where would you want to drop that song? 1982. What makes that year so special to you? Well, it was just the hugest year for rock and roll. Uh, Loverboy had get lucky out. Uh, Journey had Escape Out, both biggest records of the year, and we were both on tour together, and we were both on Columbia Records. I mean, that was a pretty big uh, year for us. And man, you talk about gold records. Whoo! That was a heck of a year for us and Journey. You mentioned that you did tour with Journey, and you've toured with so many great bands. Uh, let's see, Cheap Trick, ZZ Top, Def Leppard, now with Ario Speedwagon and Styx. Um, so many great friendships that you've probably formed out on the road. How has it been maintaining those rock and roll friendships over the years? Oh, it's fabulous. We we got a chance to, uh, a couple of years back, maybe not even that long ago, um, we were asked to, to play down for Sammy Hager's wife. She asked us, she said she, she got to pick her favorite band for her birthday. And so Sammy calls me, he goes, would you guys consider coming down and playing in Cabo Wabo? Uh, you know, and I said, you kidding? We're there for you, man. Uh, those, those are the kind of friendships that go a long ways. And I got to know uh, so many people along the way and they're all still great friends. Ran into uh, Billy Gibbons the other day at a, a charity event mm-hmm. and he stopped and he said, hey, Mike, you know, how you doing? And it was really cool to see. I hadn't seen him for a while and it was a really tender moment. And uh, Alice Cooper was there in the same room and we all kind of sat and talked and organized a Christmas event for Alice Cooper. I mean, it's really, it's been a great career and a lot of great friendships along the way, for sure. Mike, is it true that you are self-taught on the guitar? Yeah, I I play guitar just 
just for myself. I, I never really, I record demos with it, but I'm not really the guitar guy. I'm more of a drummer than a guitar guy. I started off on the drums, similar to, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Aerosmith himself. I think he started out on drums. Oh, Steven Tyler? Absolutely. I think uh, Mick Jagger was a bit of a drummer in my son. Uh, there's a bunch of guys uh, lead vocalist that started out on drums. I was one of them. I used to drum and sing all the lead vocals until the band says, you got to get out front because that's what everybody's doing. We need a front man. And I said, there's no way I'm getting out front without those drums in front of me. I was really standoffish about it, but I ended up doing it. <laughs> now I've been doing it ever since. You, you said, all right, I'll do it, but I need a pair of leather pants. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have that. You got to give me the pants. If you take the drums away, I need the red leather pants. <laughs> they are your crutch. <laughs> Such a good time. What do you love about the music business? Well, you know what? Um, I realized in the last, uh, when we had the two years off, mm -hmm. that even though I complain sometimes about traveling too much, mm -hmm. I really missed traveling. Um, it's a nice experience to move around and, and see all these places. And uh, we recently started doing it again, and it was uh, came right back to me. Um, I miss moving. I miss traveling. I think uh, in the the bottom line, I guess, would be I think I'm a gypsy. You know, I'm you know I'm a traveler, and I just can't get it out of my system. And I love the uh, the crowds, the energy you get off the crowds when you do concerts, and uh, the whole thing. I mean, we're back in a tour bus this year when we do the summer tour. It's going to be a very interesting being back in a tour bus. I'll tell you. <laughs> you're going to be on the road for four months what goes into packing I always think about this you're packing for the, I mean truly do you are you like I get six t-shirts three jeans eight pairs of underwear I, how do you pack to be away from home for four months okay here's how you do it you got two suitcases okay one is a suitcase for rock and roll stage stuff and one's a suitcase for uh, off stage stuff that's the best way to do it because when you're traveling in the tour bus you don't really want to take your stage stuff up to your room until it's stage time. You keep that in the dressing room, then you take your regular stuff up. Uh, another thing too is we we usually take our bikes with us. We like to bike around every town we go in. You know, like it's nice bicycles or motorbikes. No, like bicycles. Like we, and it's funny because we'll all we'll all go out for lunch. We'll see these mo these bicycles out in the park, and it's usually the guys that love her boy are out for a bike ride just to get some air. Yeah, it. Yeah, it's totally great. And that's what we do with the ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I got it. That is a good time. Mike Reno from Loverboy is joining me right now. Before I let you go, um, I want to talk about cover bands, all right? Cover bands get a really bad rap sometimes. Um, they get called a whole lot of different adjectives, but you did start out in a cover band. Now, so many years later, with such a successful rock career uh, still in process, does it feel really cool when you see a cover band and they pull out a Loverboy tune? Absolutely. I've recently I've heard some really good ones. I I wish I could remember the names of these bands, but online on uh, YouTube especially you can hear some really good covers of Loverboy stuff. Here here's something you might not know, Katie. But when I first started out, I used to play a lot of Stick songs and I used to play a lot of REO Speedwagon songs. And the coolest part of my whole existence is that over the years, my friendships with this, some of these bands that I totally idolized as a young young man. And now they're my friends. I mean, that's really the whole deal. Yeah. Um, you know, now they're like friends. Said, Tommy Shaw, can you believe it? It's a friend of mine. And Kevin Cronin and the whole, all the guys. But we run into them all the time. And to play together is a, a huge honor. And uh, I'll tell you what, it is a lot of fun out there. You know, I forgot for a minute. Maybe you could remind me. Um, what's everybody working for? The weekend, Katie. The weekend. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Greeno, before I let you go, um, I got to ask, uh, breakfast with rock stars, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I had uh, a sliced apple, a sliced orange, and a handful of almonds. You got, you got to fit into those leather jeans. We got, we're, we're ready for tour. <laughs> That's it. Every day I have the same thing. I'm not a big breakfast person. That's about as much as I can handle in the morning. I understand. How about uh, you? What did you have this morning? 
You know what? I had uh, a a quarter of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I make my my child's lunch every day and my son, right. and it doesn't fit in his lunchbox if it's whole. So I have to cut <laughs> off just this one side. So I then get to eat it um, as a bonus. And then I had uh, an avocado. I was going to have a half of avocado. I did. I told my husband, I was like, hey, I've got a second half of avocado in the kitchen. And five minutes later, I was like, I ate the second half of the avocado. <laughs> <laughs> and it is avocado season. Oh, that's so delicious and good for you. Yes. Sir. All right, Mike Reno. Well, everyone can catch you and Loverboy out on tour this summer, uh, starting May 31st through September 19th. A great variety of cities. There's no excuse to not see you out and about. Um, so we look forward to catching you up there on the big stage again. Thanks, Katie. I hope I see you out there this summer. It's my plan. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.